Hello, everyone. Thanks again for joining us at the 2024 Sloan Sports Analytics Conference Competitive Advantage Talks presented by Kager, also known as Craft Analytics Group. My name is Ryan Perkins, and I'm a second year MBA student at MIT Sloan. It is my pleasure to introduce our next presentation, Predicting Problem Gambling Among Sports Betters. So please join me in welcoming our speaker, Christy Savage, head of data science with Fanalytics, sorry, Fanatics, Betting and Gaming, apologies, uh, to the stage. All right, welcome. Thank you all for coming today. I will be going over predicting problem gambling among sports bettors. I am filling in for our VP of data, Madeline Want at Fanatics Betting and Gaming. And once again, I am Christy Savage. I run our data science program. So none of this would be possible without our partnerships and a lot of really key folks to make this happen. So huge shout out, huge thank you to our Fanatics Betting and Gaming principal data scientist, Jacob Leffelholz. We also employed Aimpoint to help us, FBG, with a lot of our day-to-day -day operations. So thank you to Edward and Philip. We partnered with Databricks to host our ML and AI platform. Thank you to Corey and Dan. And then of course, none of this would be possible without our partnership with AWS, who is powering the ability to create an open source library of our learnings from our RG programs. So thank you to Mike Reeves. So what is responsible gaming? Responsible gaming is an overarching initiative placed not only by states and regulatory folks, but also placed by individual companies to ensure that our patrons are gambling responsibly. We want folks to have a good time and make sure that they're making decisions that they're excited about, that they're happy with, and that are responsible for them. In order to do so, we have two phases to make sure that we can get to a final solution to continue to help our customers have that fun responsibly. The phases that we went through include our research phase and then our solution phase. And the end goal of the solution, again, is to have an open source library for our competitors and for other partners to take part in so we can continue learning across industries, learning across key players to build a unified look towards how we look at RG, responsible gaming. I'll give you a high level overview of the two phases and then we'll dive in deeper on a lot of the different aspects. But there was, of course, our first research phase. In our research phase, a lot of legwork has been done by PwC. They did a lot of research beforehand around what types of information, what types of triggers, what types of customers are there in sports betting in the casino world, what indicates that folks are uh, displaying risky behavior or having a lot of fun behavior. So we were able to take that and all of those learnings, and then try to, to apply it to our customer base. So we needed to make sure that we had similar data, that we could apply the learnings appropriately to see how it looked on our customer base, get an overarching lens of what was happening with our customers, confirm what we could use from that research, and then move on to the solution phase. In our solution phase, there's two things that we're doing. Number one, building our heuristic and trending model together to give an immediate look to our operations team who can then intervene appropriately to customers who might need help or who might need different resources. The second phase of our solution phase is to move that to the next level, move that trending model plus heuristic model, move that to a predictive model and instead of just identifying behaviors that we're already displaying or already indicating problematic behavior, but instead move towards prediction and work towards nudging customers in the right direction before they might make decisions that they're not happy with. So let's talk about that research phase. Once again, PwC a while ago had done a lot of research around responsible gaming, what that means for different customer types, once we were able to apply that to our customer base, we saw that about 20% of our accounts at Fanatics Betting and Gaming at some point have displayed high-risk behaviors. 
That's not to indicate that 20% of our customer base might have a problem with how to game responsibly, but it is to say this is kind of a messy problem with data. We look at things like how often you deposit and what you're depositing, and there might be instances where you entered your card information wrong or that card expired, and that might trigger an RG label, even though you kind of just messed up how to copy your card in. There's other instances where we're identifying patterns in your behavior, but on major days, such as the Super Bowl, you have more opportunities to bet on different things. You might go outside of your normal pattern. We might, again, label an, an RG trigger there. That's not saying you have a problem, it's just saying that identifying these patterns and digging deeper into customers' minds about what they're actually doing, their intention, and the outcome is pretty difficult. Once we were able to take that research, apply it to our custom race, and build our models, we're able to find the features in our models that are most important to us to indicate um, the need to trigger and the need to label our different customers as potentially having high risk. And so you can see here the actual output of our initial trending model. Some of the features that contribute to us being able to label customers as high risk include your deposit frequency, uh, your bets not on a Saturday, your bet value, variation in bet sparsity, and of course, all the way down to things like bets between zero to 4 a.m. You'll see here then the model uh, contribution, and so that's not saying that each of these indicate what percent of our population trigger some of these patterns or display some of these behaviors, but it's saying how important it is in our model to discover which of these indicate you might have an RG problem or the opportunity to label as high risk. The output of that model that we have built can be displayed in something like this. And then you'll notice that there's really three clusters that you can see, and that includes if we plot out your risk score as well as your trending score, so your behavior recently, your overarching risk that you've displayed since joining our platform, and then your recent risk score. You'll see customers in the bottom left who have a low risk score and a low recent trending score. These are customers who we might not label as needing an intervention or needing someone to reach out to. If you go all the way to the bottom right, you'll see customers who have a high risk score overall, as well as a high trending score. These are customers we might want to reach out to immediately when we have this information and offer them solutions, offer them the opportunity to reach out to hotlines and intervene in their experience. You'll also notice customers who might have a high overall risk score and a low trending score. For these customers, they generally exhibit a risky behavior, but they're trending in a positive direction. So we might reach out to them differently with different resources or different opportunities in app, different promotions to instead nudge your behavior as opposed to intervening. So there's a lot of different kinds of customers who we're looking at that we need to explore. And then we're happy to announce that with these models, the heuristic and the trending together, we're able to identify about 50% of accounts as high, uh, of those who are high risk, we can identify about 50% in seven days. This is good. Uh, it's pretty hard, especially when you first join a lot of sports books or other casino opportunities. You'll have promos to begin with. It takes a little bit of time to identify patterns and it's all time-based for us to be able to learn off of this. So our modeling solution can help us get towards our optimal solution, and it helps us get towards identifying customers as soon as possible. But again, it's a pretty hard problem for us to get to immediately when a customer signs up, which is also what we want to get to. We want to get to that place as soon as possible to be able to talk to these customers when it's right. So that's our solution, to build our heuristic model based on rules, 
based on how our operators who are responsible for reaching out to these customers see different patterns, combined with our regression model, our trending model, can help our operations teams reach out at the right time to these customers. If we reverse a little bit and also talk a little bit more about our heuristic model and why this was so important for us, for a heuristic model, we're really relying on our RG operations team, our humans in the loop, to help us identify customers using their industry knowledge, using their opportunity to identify patterns visually with what they know, to identify customers who might need, again, that intervention. This allows them to not wait for data science, to not rely on data science, but still be empowered to reach out when they see it's right. This also helps then our data science efforts though, because we do need our RG team to help us label customers as different opportunities of high risk, medium risk, low risk, watch list, and that helps our model learn. We therefore can use that to also establish a framework that our machine learning models are based off of. So we can take what they know to be important, what our industry experts, our operational experts know, and help feed that into the model so we can give it a little kickstart as well. Once we're able to better identify that heuristic model and we feel really good about that, that's when we were able to add on our trending model, our regression models on top of that to also help get a little bit more robust at scale and to help prioritize your recent betting behavior and your recent actions in the app. Uh, so we can go with, again, your overall risk score, but also what's happening recently to a particular customer. This is the foundation for that third phase of what we're accomplishing as well, the real-time intervention, and how, getting us up towards a better place towards predicting interventions. As I mentioned, it's also really important for our operations team to be here, to have a human in the loop, and to have accountability into the data science work that we're producing as well. Our RG team manages all aspects of our program, including actually reaching out to these customers, having the right background and knowledge and resources to reach out, and be able to also not just talk to our customers, but to our regulatory and compliance partners, and that's really important to always have humans in the loop on your data science work when you're dealing with customers and something as emotional as RG. In order to help our RG operations team with this, we took that heuristic and trending model together and created a dashboard that allows them to see daily different accounts that they might need to reach out to, maybe that they missed from their heuristic understanding, but a more scaled approach to customer management. And it will also help us, again, identify our at-risk and not at-risk customers. Using their pattern identification as humans, we can kind of see things and understand the context in which customers are taking action and helps with our modeling. So this is what that dashboard looks like. Again, we're taking that heuristic model and our regression models, applying it to our customer base daily, and then allowing our RG team to take action. The first page that they might see includes the page that shows the highest risk score account. This is all anonymous data, don't worry about it. Um, but it will show you the account ID that they should reach out to that data science might have indicated needs intervention. It will then show you uh, the different risk factors that go into why this particular customer was labeled as high risk, including trends that we're seeing. So that operation excellence person, that RG operational person, has the right context to reach out to that customer and say, this is what we're seeing. Is there anything that we can do to help you? At the bottom of that dashboard page, you'll also see the opportunity to see more charts, giving more context into why our models might have indicated that this customer needs intervention. Diving into those different charts on showing additional context, we're able to show their scores over time, their depositing and withdrawal information over time. Once again, we indicated from our models 
that is a high importance feature to us, something that we believe is a high indicator of being labeled different risky behaviors or different scores, and a lot of other different trends over time for that RG operational excellence person to dig into. We also have an overview page, so we'll be able to show you the highest accounts that you need to look into, but also be able to see many accounts at once. And so this can help our team identify patterns in what the models might be picking up on in terms of what factors are most important across all of our top accounts that might be labeled as high risk. Can you identify any patterns there? Is there any things that we should change about our app and our product? Can this help inform changes that we should make? And then you'll also see trends over time of how risky their behavior was labeled um, and their risk score. So our solution here is to take, our next step here is to take that model, take that dashboard, which is a daily look at individual customers, and work more towards something real time. We hope that by building this library with AWS, that our partners, that our competitors can use, can contribute to, and can learn from, so that we can all collect more data, improve our modeling capabilities, and then apply it to each of our different customer bases. Of course, this is how data science works. The more data you have, the more opportunities we have to learn from each other, the better our solutions can actually are. So we're excited to launch this so that way we can continue this flywheel, continue improving our RG efforts across the industry. Post building our daily model of our customers that our operational folks can see daily and reach out to manually, we do want to move more into a predictive inference space. So instead of retroactively looking at customers' behavior and seeing that they have displayed risky behavior, we want to move towards a world where we can prevent harm. So maybe in an actual session in real time, we can reach out to different customers with different opportunities, uh, different RG things that they can partake in, whether it's budgeting, whether it's a timeout, whether it's just resources so they can feel empowered to do their own research and make their own decisions. Because again, it's not just labeling someone as low risk, uh, trending in the right direction, or high risk needs to reach out to. There are customers who could be low risk overall, but trending in a direction that might need a nudge. Or there might be customers who are trending downwards in terms of their risky behavior, but have a history of having a high risk behavior. You wanna reach out to those customers differently with different opportunities and really make that solution personalized to them in the moment. So some of our real-time product experience triggers that we're working on and that we already have launched um, include things like setting your own limits, encouraging timeouts, and being in control of your budget. And this is something that a lot of other sports books have and it's something that we want to be able to learn from from each other. So when we launch this as an open source library with AWS, Again, we hope we can all learn from each other to say which triggers, which interferences, which nudges actually help our customers make the right decisions. So what this could look like, for us, we have built the bottom section already. We have an offline model, and we're working on building these trending models. And so we have an offline store with our partner Snowflake, our data warehouse which is able to feed into our model training capabilities, which we've partnered with Databricks. This is given to that dashboard for our RG, cust uh, RG operational folks to look at, to, to be able to do the right interventions. And this is all offline, daily aggregate for customers. What we're moving towards and what we hope to continue to package up is also up top, where we can work towards online inference for real-time risk. And so we could work on actually having 
Kafka streams in real time with a Hazelcast stream processor to then work with a real time scoring engine in a given session, in a given moment to then influence the app experience for those customers. And again, we'll have different levels of nudges versus interference in different experiences for different customers so that they can respond hopefully in a positive way and continue to have a positive experience responsibly. All right, so that is what we have built so far. It is an open source library in partnership with AWS and we're hoping that our industry experts across the uh, entire industry will help build this with us. Ready to take any questions as well. It was very high level, so I'm expecting a lot of questions. Um, hi, I was just wondering, um, obviously books do their own things to limit their own customers and identify uh, customers with issues, but what's stopping a customer from getting limited on one app and then hopping over to another? So how do you foresee in the future um, perhaps different books coming together to like kind of create like a cumulative um, like issue list of uh, gamblers who have kind of gotten out of hand so they don't continue their problem? Exactly. So that is what we hope that this is the baseline towards working together with different industry partners and different competitors. We want to make this open source so that anyone can utilize it. As far as sharing PII, as far as sharing account information, that can't happen for the safety of the individual customers. So there isn't a great opportunity to necessarily send lists back and forth between different competitors, but there is the opportunity to at least learn from each other and then be able to work again towards that real time nudging and that real time interference as opposed to waiting for that customer to go to a different sports book, display risky behavior, reach out a day later. It's a very hard problem to solve, but we're hoping that this is the foundation. Hi, so you went from building rules-based models to then building a machine learning model on top. So did you learn about any new features that you weren't expecting to be important when you moved towards a machine learning model compared to what you had in the rule set? Yeah, exactly. Um, there was a lot learned and there's still a lot to be learned. I think for the rules base, what's most interesting is that you're looking at individual patterns and individual features independently. And so we're seeing that bets at a certain time of day might indicate the opportunity to reach out. Or your deposit information uh, that you've just completed over the course of yesterday might indicate the opportunity to reach out. Modeling has helped us identify patterns that interact with each other. And so I think that's been the most interesting. We can get more nuanced into if you have one thing triggered versus the pattern and the interaction between all of the different things that you're trying. That's what modeling is helping us get towards. Hi, uh, just two questions. The first one is, you said this is gonna be open source. Mm -hmm. just, just, could you just tell us what it's called? Um, and then the second one is, uh, how do you handle a disgruntled customer? Uh, so the false positives where you know someone who has been flagged as risky, uh, but then you know they're very, very, very unhappy with you. How do you handle that where you know, they're saying, why are you flagging me as risky, whereas I'm, I'm not risky? Yeah, for the first question, AWS and FBG will be doing an unveiling of the name and how to participate in this, so please stay tuned for that one. As far as reaching out to different customers, that is why you need that human in the loop, that RG operational excellence team, and folks who have been trained to reach out to customers. And so there are ways um, that you can use different verbiage, different ways of nudging customers, and different ways to poke and say, you're definitely uh, displaying behavior that we would like to reach out about versus 
all right, we're getting indicators. I'm going to treat this differently. I'm going to respond to you differently and just ask if you're needing of assistance, if you're needing of different resources. So it is very, very important to have humans who understand the emotional issues that could come from being triggered or from being labeled as something that you weren't aware of or that you weren't ready for. Um, it's really important to have those folks have that training and have that empathy that models don't really have. Um, so you've talked about the different sort of like the customer retention strategies, right, between those like different sort of friend groups. So apart from the promotional side of things, do you think like there's any other strategies that people could adopt to like have these customers sort of hooked to the apps, but also have a limit or also handle those sort of groups responsibly from the sportsbook side? Yeah. Um, I think that when you're creating the product experience, it needs to be a partnership between people who obsess over the customer experience and want to create something so pleasurable and so much fun and so intuitive and easy to use with folks who care about how to help empower customers to make smart decisions. And so we do have those two teams who work together, who share insights, who share knowledge. Um, you'll notice across a lot of tech industries, people really focus on that one. The best customer experience, uh, the optimistic side of building an app that you're having a really great time with. In our industry, we really want to hammer home that second part and make sure that you have the right teams, models, infrastructure, frameworks in place to monitor that. And so I think that we're kind of a step ahead of a step ahead of some of the other social media companies who prioritize this over this side, um, a couple other different kinds of companies who don't have to worry about this other side. So it's just important to put as much effort and resources into this and then to be able to share those insights and make sure that everyone's on the same page and then you're able to learn from each other. Thank you very much, everyone. That's all the, um, that's all the time we have. Please enjoy the rest of the conference.